when creating a REST API. Good documentation is instrumental. Moreover, every change in the API should be simultaneously described in the reference documentation. Accomplishing this manually is a tedious exercise. So, automation of the process was inevitable. Hello everyone, this is Shonko and welcome to another video. Uh, if you are not already subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and when you subscribe, please click on the bell icon so that you never miss a video on my channel. So, in this video, we'll look at Swagger 2 for uh, Spring REST web services. And for this uh, demonstration, we'll use the Spring Fox implementation of the Swagger 2 specification. So, Swagger 2 is an open source project that is used to generate uh, REST API documents for RESTful web services. And it provides a user interface to access the REST web uh, services via the web browser. So, for this uh, demo, I've already created a project and I've named it uh, Student Service. And let's take a look at the structure of this project. Okay, let's take a look at the dependencies of this project. So I have added this uh, dependency Spring Fox Swagger 2 and then Spring Fox Swagger uh, UI and then we have Spring Boot Starter Web and we have Dev Tools and Spring Boot Starter Test. So these are the dependencies for the project and let's take a look at the Java classes. So this is going to be the entry point uh, for application and here I have uh, here I have mentioned enable swagger 2 uh, so it would enable uh, the swagger, uh, swagger uh, implementation swagger 2 implementation and then here I have provided a docket pin and inside this I have mentioned the base package as Commodore student so it is gonna uh, look for controllers inside this package Commodore student and we have our controller inside Commodore student controller uh, it's gonna search or it's gonna uh, scan uh, these packages uh, which start with com.student uh, for controllers to provide to provide documentation for the endpoints so let's take a look at the controller so this is a very simple controller that I've created uh, and this method here accepts a student uh, and this is a post request it accepts a student and it simply returns the same student and this is how our student class looks so uh, this is a very simple pojo class that i've created and let's take a look at how this api works or how this uh, how this application works so i'm just going to run this let's say run as spring boot app Okay, so the application is running on port 8181, localhost 8181, and uh, we're gonna hit this uh, endpoint. So let's go to Postman and hit this endpoint. So it's running on 8181, and we're gonna hit uh, this resource student, and this is a post uh, post request body that we have set up here. So this is a post uh, post method and let's just try to run this click on send okay we have a 200 response here just need to drag this up okay yeah so this is exactly the same uh, student details that I had sent as uh, the request body okay now let's take a look at the documentation that has been uh, generated for us by Swagger. So for that, I'm gonna open up uh, this web browser. We'll be able to see uh, the documentation for this API. Okay, so I'm gonna type in HTTP localhost 8181 slash swagger 
slash UI dot HTML. So here we can see the documentation for our student controller. And inside this, we have this, uh, this post mapping for this particular resource. If I click on this, we can see the request structure for this and I can even send a request from here so I'll say and I'll click on try it out so here we have the response these are the headers this is the response code here and we have the response body here so all it did was to generate this documentation all I did was to add these dependencies inside POM so these are the two dependencies that I added inside POM Sp uh, Spring Fox Swagger 2 and Spring Fox Swagger 2 uh, UI and then here I Wrote enable swagger to and then I provide a bean for docket a docket bean so inside and inside this uh, inside this method I mentioned the base package inside which uh, the controller should be scanned for and that's all I did to generate the documentation so this really makes our lives easy easier by you know generating uh, the the documentation for us instead of us having to write uh, documents and, uh, and stuff for our APIs and if if a client or if a stakeholder uh, looks at this particular documentation it becomes really easy for that person to understand what's going on with our uh, API and how our API or APIs are supposed to uh, behave and that is how uh, Spring, uh, Spring Boot has uh, made our lives easier made life for developers easier by providing startup projects and uh, ready-made code so that we can focus on uh, writing the business logic and uh, get rid of boilerplate code writing boilerplate code again and again so that is all about this uh, video and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did enjoy please give it a thumbs up thanks for watching